Simone's calendar is here. Now, it's important to be able to pronounce Simone's last name because it's the name of her YouTube channel. TED Talks pronounced it Gietz. Uh, Stephen Colbert and Adam Savage seem to pronounce it Yatch or Yetch. Uh, Google told me to try and say Yetz. Now, whether or not any of us are able to conjure even a remote facsimile of Swedish, we all appreciate Simone and her delightful projects. Right now, we're gonna revel in this, her first foray into industrial product design. Now, I wanna take mine apart, actually, and see how she did this. That today on Home and Design. This is the Everyday Calendar. Now, Simone launched this as a Kickstarter project, and it took about two years, uh, a year over budget, but she won't find a more sympathetic recipient than another product designer. It's pretty amazing to design something like this at all, and it's one thing to you know put together a prototype in a short time frame, but to scale, especially to her immensely successful Kickstarter scale, uh, is really an amazing thing, and uh, all credit is due regardless of the time frame. Now, I want to take mine apart, actually, and see, see how she did this. Now, prior to becoming a product designer, Simone was known the world over as the queen of crappy robots, and she's been making us laugh for years and think with her fun robot projects. And it's been so rewarding to see her turn her attention to developing a real product and discovering, as she put it, that product design creates a pit of anxiety, a deep pit of anxiety. And uh, those of us in the field uh, we feel that comment really resonates. In several iterations, she ultimately has designed a calendar where we can mark each day that we perform our respective habitual process, whether it be meditation or journaling, uh, or if you need a star on your potty chart, uh, then uh, you can keep your everyday calendar marked. and. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun and a lot of inspiration using this in times to come. But right now, we're getting it apart so that we can check out how this thing's made. Ah, oh, these boards are ingenious. And here we see how all the touch sensors send their information back to the light board, which is the next layer here. Looks like we've got a layer of EVA foam here, and it looks laser cut or water jet cut perhaps. Uh, to create a little frame around each LED so that each LED discreetly conveys its light to the proper placement of each touch button. So that layer removes. Now, I think with a little Pepecura and an X-Acto knife, we're on our way to creating a Mandalorian helmet here. Okay. I wonder if there's anything behind this, but here we see 365 LEDs to mark the months, and we'll go ahead and see what's beyond this realm. You know, at Simone's TED Talk, she mentioned that she never could have imagined the career that's befallen her as somebody who just 
set out to engage all her curiosity in this way, but she said her success has happened because she was being enthusiastic about what she was doing and she was sharing that enthusiasm with everybody else. And I, I couldn't agree more. I love when Simone launched her Kickstarter campaign. Yes, Simone, uh, that was the absolute worst way to introduce the product design Kickstarter by basically announcing to the world that you had a reputation based solely on making things that don't work. But that's why I immediately supported the project. Okay, so there's nothing else back here. Um, what we do see is what one of my favorite features about the, the calendar is that the power inlet as well as a programming uh, port are located deep within the board and not just out at the outer edge of the frame. So when you hang this, you're not gonna be stuck with an ugly barrel connector or DIN connector hanging off of the bottom of your frame. That happens up in this area here. So if you're as committed as an everyday calendar suggests that you are, you could mount this to the wall over a receptacle in a pocket, and this could be invisibly mounted where your power cord is concealed and this thing is just like magically luminous on your wall. And I sure hope we'll get the opportunity to install ours that way. Now, we all know that bamboo is a great renewable resource, and it's great for a project like this, but visually, style-wise, I don't have a lot of this uh, playing in my environment right now. And so, the step I may take in personalizing this is painting the frame. And I don't have to paint much, I just have the outer side here in the front, and then just because you may be able to see down into the edge, I'll probably paint it as far as this little step, which is uh, set back so that the touchpad inlays into the calendar, but it also acts as a standoff, uh, along with these little standoffs out here in the center of the thing, to hold the touchpad away from the LED board. So we're gonna sand this and get it ready for paint and uh, get it masked. Okay, this thing's about ready. I think it's gonna make uh, a little bit too big of a mess in here and it's a beautiful day outside, so we'll head outside and paint it.
we're back for the, uh, the best part of any painting project, and that is removing the masking. Let's see if this turned out. Kickstarter project shipped with a couple other items. The first one of them was a fun pin that says, look at all the times I did a thing. Perfect Simone grammar. So uh, that was fun. The project also shipped with a t-shirt. It's a full bleed circuit diagram. There's LEDs everywhere, which I'm sure was just like the inside of Simone's mind when she was developing the calendar. There was a beautiful template that shipped with the calendar so you could know just how to mount it. And my favorite item was uh, this little quality control Polaroid of Simone inspecting your calendar. But I wanna know how do you do 2000 Polaroids? So uh, that'll be a question I hope I get to ask at some point. We wanna go ahead and get this reassembled. I wanna see if I have some fasteners that can be used as an alternative. So let's go check that out. All right, these little uh, board standoffs uh, clue us into that we're probably talking metric here. So maybe like an M2 or an M4 screw. Let's take a look at what we might have that give us some options. There's really a couple ways that you could go here. You can use the fasteners to decorate. Uh, and we've got a couple options here. We've got a socket cap screw. We've got a pan head Torx. Um, I think the silver kind of clashes with the gold. The other way to go is to subdue the fasteners and push them back in the composition, uh, leaving more focus uh, on the, the beautiful graphics that Simone's designed here on the interface. So. Yeah. I like this, uh, this matte nylon fastener that's gonna accomplish that goal for us. You know, I remember Norm and Simone were talking on Tested and they got to a point in their conversation where the one or both of them almost said this could be a work of art and Simone shied away from that. Uh, she wasn't willing to go that far and I understand why, but what I really loved was Norm's response. He says, no, no, it, it is, art because when used, at least in a certain way, uh, it, it transcends product, it transcends decor, and it becomes rather the reflection of a life lived artfully. You gotta love Tested. Okay, so I'm sitting down with the fasteners we've chosen. Um, I wonder how close they are in length to the ones that Simone specified. Hers are not quite six millimeters, they're about five and three quarters. That makes me wonder if the screws are gonna bottom out in the, in the standoffs. So we're gonna put one in until it bottoms out. And sure enough, there's a little gap. We'll check that. And it's just about a millimeter. So we need to see how much room we need here. All right, and the board is 1.6 millimeters. So we should be fine. That screw will be fully tight before it reaches the bottom of the standoff receptacle. So we're clear to proceed. And I mentioned the programming port that's here on the board. And if I didn't say so, that's there because Simone 
made the code for the everyday calendar open source, encouraging people to hack their calendar and come up with some cool new ideas. There was one already I've seen where uh, somebody turned the board into a low res game of Tetris. And we'll link to that project in the description. And we should be ready to reassemble here. And the first step will be putting in our board spacers, AKA standoffs. These plastic bits are so easy to cross thread. This is a little bit of a harrowing act. I can imagine a, the threaded stud on one of these standoffs uh, breaking off in the little brass threaded receptacle here. So when they don't go in like butter, there's a high, high pucker factor to reinstalling these. So I suppose if you're a digital native, you could maybe make it so when you reach 90% uh, completion rate for a given month, when you hit uh, the first day of the next month, maybe the whole previous month activates retroactively to reward you. Maybe you could come up with a little animation at the end of each month, like the intermission between video game levels. So after a month of going vegan or journaling every day, the last space invader can bug out and uh, head for home. But alas, for a Luddite like myself, beyond its intended use, the everyday calendar will suffice as the Porsche 959 of light brights. I could maybe draw the little human form decoded from binary in the Arecibo message, or spell things like cat. Simone has shared laughs and tears with us both when projects get out of control and when life feels out of control. Like when she walked us through her experience with a brain tumor. You know, it was right around that time when I first met Laura Kampf at Spring Make in Cleveland and we bonded over our mutual admiration of Simone and how she was handling that. We talked about how when Simone gets vulnerable with her personal adventures into challenging and unknown territory. What she's really doing is laying bare the collective discomfort we all have with uncertainty. And by shedding a little light, and now these 365 little lights into those dark corners, she contributes something quite lovely to our collective experience.
That's why I was so proud to support the Everyday Calendar Kickstarter. And while we're so excited to receive this awesome product that to us is so much more as an emblem of Simone's best. You know, Stephen Colbert called some of Simone's more dangerous inventions uh, the stuff of nightmares. But here at Home and Design, we think the Everyday Calendar is the stuff of dreams. <laughs> Say something corny every day, day one. Boop. <laughs> hey, go ahead and find that thumbs up button, like the video, and subscribe to the channel if you appreciate what we're doing here. You can find links to our social media in the description, along with links to Simone's channel, the Everyday Calendar, and the fun Tetris mod for the calendar by Electricity for Progress that I mentioned earlier. We'll see you next time for more on how designers work and play right here on Home and Design. Some of the folks here who know what they're talking about said they wanted to take a crack at it. So like, you know, now we get to learn something new. <laughs>